namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa so let us uh, remind the and respect the buddha dhamma sangha and all our teachers from whom we had a contact a buddhism or something good things something moral things okay so let us pay respect to them and with that so we will start so as you see actually okay uh, this is what actually today we will discuss Next Maybe thing we... is reading in Pali. So the main thing is, you know, early Buddhism, that is the Buddhist teachings, which is written in Pali. So, and you are going, you so like, we are going to start as early Buddhism and we are going to suttas. But if we don't read the Pali, you know, it does not make sense. So what we will do is actually, we will read the Pali. But we means here, I'm not expecting you to read the Pali. For that, if you really want to study Pali, if you want to really read with us or here, for that something required, like some kind of knowledge, how to read these things. And if somebody really want to read it, want to do such kind of chanting, read Pali, we also can make the, some kind of arrangement. No problem. We are very free to do, do so. But here, when I'm going to read the some chant, uh, you know, the, some reading in Pali, so at that have you just emails like maybe this is the Buddha's words? If the Buddha was telling these teachings, he could he was using this language, these words. So these are the tone, these are the words. You just pay respect instead of making like kind of complaint. Ah, I don't understand this finally. Why this one level talking this? Uh, just go to English translation, this and that. So it's better. Well, if I if we need to read the Pali, so, I mean, early Buddhist discourses in, 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 in English, you don't need me, or we don't need to be like this. There are so many translations out there. And the most important thing is actually, you will see in my translation, we are doing translation together with some other teachers also. I told this translation is different from others because uh, sometimes translation coming with their own culture understanding, sometimes word by words, things like that way. But in this translation, uh, the, tra the sutta that we have translated, we try to get the maximum, uh, the closest idea of the Pali word when we tell this in English. So there's one benefit actually. For example, we will talk about Dham Chakka Pavatna Sutta, right? The first discourse of the Buddha. Then actually, um, actually you, you can read it in English. Uh, but why you need us? Why you need the translator? Because uh, there is a hundred translators still. It's, it's important to understand the things accurately. Okay. So the final thing is like when to read the Pali, try to follow me. If you can't, it's okay. No need to complain yourself or no need to make it bother. Just feel like, or maybe you can close eye. You just, you, you listen. That's all. You just feel like, Okay, just I listening the things, some Buddha's word, that's all. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Okay, and how to look at this presentation? Uh, yes, as I said, actually, we will talk here a lot of things, uh, not only the words that we are going to show here, we will bring so many related things, facts, ideas. Sometimes the, you, I, we will give here you some kind of, you know, the references that you can, you know, to go further. So the things are like that. Okay, so and this presentation or this discussion is not the discussion, the one and only in the world. <laughs> and like this, there's many, many, so you can join anywhere, no problem. So, what we are trying to do is he actually trying to share with them, with the people, just be nice, learn things like that. Okay, okay. And the next thing is, uh, there is, as I said, there is more than little PPT. So PPT, I mean, the, here PowerPoints, uh, we put some words only, but we'll talk more than that. Okay. So that's why instead of joining us, if you just read the PPT, you will get no idea actually. That's why you need to come with us to discuss with us. And of course, we will have the kind of questions and answer section where you can ask the raised questions. Okay. 
Okay, the references. So when we talk about the early Buddhist teachings, actually, uh, time to time, we will talk about some early Buddhist teachings, some points, and the most of the points I will refer from the, uh, you know, the books, especially, of course, canon, canon. And I will roughly go to the, you know, Bhikkhu Bodhis translation for canon, plus Professor Karuna Dasa's, Professor Vai Karuna Dasa's book, Early Buddhist Teachings. Uh, because when I was uh, learning, I was having the contact with him. We were having the discussion with him. I personally learned more, so many things from him rather than books, actually. So I think uh, this is time for me even to share all those things with you. And another thing is also, okay, you, the professor, um, Dr. Somaratna, sir, he also um, written a books regarding the early Buddhist teaching. So uh, this is also a very good book. So we will refer this two, three books, okay, time to time. And yes, discussion, organization. So uh, here, as you saw, like we began with respect to the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and actually directly we will go to the, some kind of, um, for example, if I take a discussion, a sutta, particular sutta, so regarding the sutta, like the background, how is origin, why that's in sutta important, we will talk about something that before reading the actual suttas. For example, I know many of you are very familiar with the Mahatma Sutta, like right? loving kindness discourses. But I have doubt like how many of you know actually why Buddha said about it, where the Buddha said about it, how to practice this, how to categorize the Mahatma Sutta. You know, there's so many categorizations. Indeed, Mahatma Sutta is the person like, uh, it, it, it's not to memorize and chant every day, but to practice. So this Metta Sutta included three aspects, philosophical aspect, day-to-day eh, -day life aspect, and a spiritual aspect from there. So if we do not discuss that Sutta, if you do not analyze that Sutta, if you do not make a kind of classification about that Sutta, we really can't get the proper idea. Just chanting, just listening is not enough. What the Buddha meant is not to just chanting, not to just listening, but make or put that idea into practice in daily life. Okay, so that's what we will do. Then after giving the kind of background about the suttas, then we will go to the uh, discourse, original discourses. Now, what is the Buddha? The Buddha is the historical person who was enlightened. So how he did we know he there was a Buddha, princess born called the Siddhartha, and he was living long time in the palace. Then uh, he somehow he had an opportunity to go outside to see the real world. After seeing the real world, he said, what is this? I didn't see this real world before. Now I can see this world. I cannot be in this situation. I need to overcome this situation. Then he renounced the household life. He did a long term meditations. Then he went to so many teachers, right? As you know, the Alara Kalam, the practices, who the extreme practices. So then he went to them, but he decided, you know, he learned whatever they gave to him, but he realized this is not what I want. Then he, you know, went, went for the middle the path. Then he did meditation. He got the realization. He revealed this middle path to the people. So this is what happened to the Buddha. Now, in this discussion, we are not going to actually was whether the Buddha was born in India or Nepal, actually whether this sutta talking this or that. We are not going to take that sign. We are going to read the suttas and uh, we are going to take the meaning of the sutta and we will take the sutta as a, the doctrine of the sutta, doctrine of the Buddha, teachings of the Buddha. That's all. We are not going to historical point because to do so, there are so many people who are doing. For example, you know, the Kasi, uh, Kasi Kuru in the Satipatthana Sutta. So whether the Kuru is, a, you know, the country, city or town, the people doing such kind of research on that. So let them do it. Okay. Maybe we can study after their research. But however, in discussion, we are not going to that side. We are just going to the some kind of Buddhist teaching, what actually saying in the in the in the suttas okay now to begin this all to you know to, to begin all uh, to this topic that is like the uh, the middle path emergence of the middle path that means the middle doctrine and middle doctrine 
uh, we need to have to have some kind of uh, some kind of historical background. So as you know, in India, in India, I say actually there's a lots of a lots of uh, how to say a lots of spiritual or uh, different different religious uh, practices going on. So um, at some point during the Buddha's time, okay, during the Buddha's time, two two practices were uh, very uh, well known. That is called the Brahmanism and Shamanism. Okay. So Brahmanism, you know the you know the Brahmanism, the people who believe the caste system, Vedas, okay, and Atman, Brahman Sahabata, who said that like you know the body and soul are the same. And after the, we in die, we will renounce, you know, the we will born with the Mahabrahma. So these ideas, okay. The creation theories, the world is created by the Mahabrahma. So this was the idea there. But in the same way, there were the there were some other traditions, uh, some other traditions who did not, uh, you know, accept these things. Now, if I if I tell you like who is the Brahmanism? Brahmanism is the people who continue the teachings of the Veda. Mm -hmm. Okay, the teachings of the Veda, Vedic teachings, and these people are uh, representing the. Uh, themism or monism, monity, uh, monism, and they are the, the 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 one who you know deal with these teachings and with the Creator God is the called the Brahman, and the people the Brahmins, but the others other side is the people who reject those ideas called the Shramana. Now Shramana is the people the group, really, I mean the kind of spiritual practitioner group who did not uh, follow the idea like the creation, everything is created by God, okay? And car system, you know, the car system at that time in India was like, you know, the Brat, Manakshya, Sriya, Vashya, Shudra, something like this, okay? So they did not, uh, you know, follow this car system. And uh, the, the people who, the people who were practicing under the Stramana tradition, they are called the Shramanas, ascetics, right? And the Brahmana, the people here, the people who belong to the Brahmana and people who are using, uh, you know, the practice, the Brahmanism, they were homeless after some times. For example, they have had the household life, like a study, household life. And after they retired, then they are doing so. But this Shramana tradition is like the lifetime their lifetime shamanas, okay? So uh, some of the shamana traditions groups are in the Jainism, Ajivakas, and Buddha also actually uh, fall into shamana tradition, but Buddha, how uh, Buddha's uh, practice are different. Now, what are the differences between the, these, I mean, they are called the shamanism, but what are the differences between the Buddha, Jainism, and Abhivakas? Okay, we need to be discussed about this like this. Now, for example, if you take the karma, all of you know the karma, you're right? The, the concept of karma. Now, according to the Jainism, all action have karmic result. All the, all the action, have karmic result from the past and those karmic result cannot they can 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 overcome such kind of bad result by the ascetic practice okay where ajivaka says all the action have karmic result all the action whatever they have the karmic result from the past they cannot be cancelled by any kind of ascetic practices. That means what? If you're done, it's done. There's no way that you can change it. Some kind of. So more or less actually, these all are piling into the extent of creation theories are there. Okay. So what the Buddha said is that uh, karma or the action is about your intentions. It's about your intention. Why you said so? what you really meant by saying that. So these are like that, okay? So this is just like to give you one example like this. So there's lots of things. Now, one of the things that we are going to talk about is like the practice of 
practice uh, practice okay so during this buddha's time actually there was many others practices to like you know the sunaka vrata and go vrata there is two vrata they look like uh, attached to the you know the ritual and practices sunaka vrata means like in order to liberate yourself you are practicing like a, a dog eating at a dog behave as a dog talk trying to talk as a dog something like that and the go means cow vrata means you know the attachment to the kind of practices so these also rejected by the buddha uh, during the buddha's time okay there was three kind of uh, belief okay the belief that buddha rejected so that is in pali it's called the pubba uh, pubbe kata hetuvada that means everything is determined okay Every, like this is happening because of past because of that because of that okay so all the experience that is caused by the past action that we are suffering we are having the joy whatever we are experiencing whatever happening to our life is, is is all about the past karma so buddha reject this idea okay and also creation is like every experience that um, caused by the gods creative activity so like whatever we are having whatever we are doing whatever happening to our life it's all it's all not my wish but the god's wish the god who created me because that was a kind of brahmanism i you know there was a situation like um, i cannot hate the people because god don't hate that person i cannot do this because god do not do that something like this so i only about to do or i can do only what is the permission given by the gods something like this okay that's called the um visrani manavad and another thing is sometimes some people say uh, there is no cause okay in our life there is some experience which occur with any kind of cause and conditions so they according to these people they have said there is no cause and condition behind any kind of actions any kind of experience any kinds of thoughts so these also rejected by the buddha so now just to put in simple what, what so there are three kind of things that buddha reject or views three kind of views the buddha reject that is called the strict determinism okay that is like everything happened because of the past and create uh, creationism that means everything happening because of the god's wish and another view is things happening without any cause and conditions so buddha reject this okay buddha reject this and the, in the same time there was like and the two views actually all these two views have the connected each other so these views um these two views is very famous actually all of you know about it that is like the uh, externalism and inhalism like everything exists okay like we will exit our after die okay uh, like our when we die only body die but soul will remain like soul theory like the people who are believed in during the buddha's time the soul theory so soul will remain so will continue so that also rejected actually this one actually rejected this was one extreme another one was there is nothing there, there is, will be nothing remain after past our our remain our our die with our death everything will be gone there is nothing so that is the nihilism sasatavada and uchchedavada so you see now what i want to say is during the buddha's time you know they went from for a long time before the buddha these things was happening and it is very difficult for me to give you no general idea about this with these two three minutes because it's a long things to be studied but i think uh, for this discussion because we are going to talk about the middle path actually this was the what actually during the buddha's time and buddha realized this this is not the one this is not the way to overcome so what we need to do is we need to find something we need to find a way 
to overcome this. And to this, how, how, how we related these kind of things actually, if we deep, if we dig ourselves deeply, actually, we will see this kind of idea knowingly or unknowingly, directly or indirectly. So it's you that need to be master about things theoretically and understand and realize and make yourself different or make yourself away from such kind of extremes. And then another point actually I need to talk about is um, sometimes there is a people, there is a people who study about the Buddha and his teachings. They are, do not see the, the uh, uh, a historical characteristic of the Buddhas. They will say um, they want to make it, you know, limit the particular time period, particular systems, particular beliefs. Um, uh, make a link with a you know, particular uh, philosophy at that time, this and that. But actually, if you really study about the Buddhism, if you really investigate the Buddhism, you will realize that Buddhism is akalic. Okay? Akalic. And another thing is, now, um, as I said, actually, there was so many, um, you know, so many uh, different views was there, and Buddha, you know, the Buddha enlightened finally. Then, then we, when we see the Buddha, the enlightened Buddha, this is what we see. So this is, um, and not like others tradition actually. Even the Buddha's tradition, Buddha's tradition is, I mean, the Buddha's teaching is something that every person can be experienced. But he realized, he does not say this is the path that I have realized and no one can come, this one, this one and only me who is in this path, okay? So I think, um, yeah, you can understand this thing when you're reading. And here also a few things, just let, let me say, uh, say, the, uh, say the very roughly. Uh, what is the Buddha's teaching then? Of course, there's so many questions we will uh, can answer with the, his teachings, with idea, philosophical idea. But try to see the Buddha's teaching also like as a descriptive and prescriptive. What are the descriptions? So Buddha says why we are suffering, what makes us suffering, and how we cling to the things subjectively. Like this is mine, this is I, something like this. And prescription is the Buddha. Okay, the Buddha prescribes the path to of practice to eliminate the occurrence of subjective configuration. Subject, I mean, taking things subjectively. Okay. So then he reveals a plan for us to follow that plan that we can end this uh, so called suffering. And there's a people who also want to see that Buddhism is something like the religions, philosophy, or something like that. But um, is the Buddhism is religions or is philosophy is a big question that needs to be asked. But yes, it is true there's some the religious aspect for the sustain that today we can see and the philosophical ideas there. But the more importantly, we have to understand that the Buddha's teaching is not something that emerge to, you know, against those views that we discuss about or against uh, anything or to answer those uh, practices. That the emergence of the Buddha is the main aim is to end the suffering, to end the suffering. Okay. So that's why actually it is unwise to interpret the Buddha's teaching as it is arose merely as a religious philosophical response to the two uh, constructing thoughts. That is the Sasatavada and Chedavada. Everything is exist, everything does not exist. Okay. So this is wrong if you say, I mean, most of the time people want to, I mean, there is a people, there is a scholar who want to see that the Buddhism is something that arose to you know the to answer to against these kind of views. That's wrong, actually. 
So these also things like um, Buddhism is uh, Buddha's teaching is the one as a whole, the, the comprehensive system of thoughts about the nature of the things of our experiential world. Okay. So how we experience, why we experience, how, how the experience lead us to forward to understand this Buddhism help us. And this uh, knowledge, this Dhamma actually coming from the single person called the Buddha Dhamma, Buddha. Of course, there's a many scholar who actually see the to see the Buddha. I mean, without putting a historical person, you go on. You must do first identify who is the Buddha. Buddha was living there and some of the systematic things that we can tell the people or we can, you know, the it's easy for to people to see the, yes, uh, things are historical recorded. Uh, just legendary, just imagery is not enough. Okay. This is the very, very this is the very important things that I want to really want to say is Buddhism is not the patchwork. Buddhism is not the patchwork. So what do you mean actually this patchwork means? Do you have any idea? So um I see this this can be called a bell. So it's kind of you know to refresh yourself. <laughs> So um, I want actually, you can have a small break. In the break, please think what does it mean patchworks and what does it mean Buddhism is not a patchwork. Okay. So how do you think? Let's have a few minutes break, maybe the five minutes or five to seven minutes. Because uh, then later on that we will directly go for the sutta. I think... Because you know it's our that Buddhism also Jainism from Jainism also something that you can know and then Brahm uh, uh, Brahman no from that uh, Brahmanism can you say the yeah Brahmanism, there are also yeah. some taken no that it's a seal also it's a many thing no in that mm. sense yeah I think can you say in that sense you think so well, if I understood you you are saying that. When you look at the Buddhism, something you see that like uh, there are some things coming from the Jainism and the Buddhism, so it's patchwork. But here you have to understand like the Buddha Dhamma, I mean, Buddha's teachings, not the Buddha's culture, Buddha's traditions, or uh, Buddha's. Mm -hmm. um, I can understand what you're saying. Like uh, if you if you take the Vinaya, right? So like Buddha mm -hmm. said, regard the Vasana. To observe the vasana, so you may think and like, okay, this was some kind of ideas coming from the society yeah, yeah. Due, to the, due to the Jainism's criticism. Uh, but here we, we have to see the Buddha Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha, actually, like what the Buddha I means, mm -hmm. what the Buddha's teaching. That is what we have to understand. Actually, what is the Buddha's teaching? What is the Buddha's teaching? Now we. Uh, somebody, if, if somebody asking you what is the Buddha's teaching, well, how do you answer? Okay, now two questions. <laughs> what is the Buddha's teachings? If somebody asking you what is the Buddhism, how do you answer? And is the Buddhism is patchwork? It's of course it's all interrelated. Mm -hmm. I also would like to hear our venerable Bhante. I can see Bhante is also there. Hello, venerable. Please accept my respect. <laughs> yes, uh, I cannot see the name actually, but I see only the iPad. <laughs> yeah. Kenny, how do you think? Is the Buddhism is a patchwork? Uh, no. Uh... Like you said, it's not a patchwork because it is not putting bits and pieces together to make it one thing, but mm. it is original on its own, mm. uh, complete on its own, complete without story. adding, without adding anything to make it complete. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I think the Buddha's teaching is really um, to show us how to end our suffering 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. Actually, you know, um, there's one situation where Buddha said, um, I came here only to end the suffering. That's all. <laughs> I came here just to just to show you the suffering, why suffering, the way out of suffering, that's all. Yeah. But to make this process, you know, to, to do this process, then we need a lot of things. That's why actually the morality, you know, do, you know, the you know, the some other things came actually. Because the process uh, of ending sufferings cannot be done alone. It needs some support at, you know, so many ways. Social support and mental support at, you know, there are so many ways. Yeah. Bhante, can we say that Buddhism is patchwork? Yeah, we can't. Well, I think what the uh, what the Sati said is is uh, uh, is the one way to see the Buddha's thing because because Buddha was the person who was listening to the society, and when we see the, the Buddhist vinaya, we can see the situation where Buddha was listening, and he trying to get some of the things like, uh, but what, what the Buddha's teachings what the buddha found through his realization is his own it's his own these things were not there uh he i mean during the i mean before arriving on the buddha before the buddhas what the liberation what they said about liberation is what it's like being with or uh, unite being united with the gods Mahabrahma, right? That was the ideas. That is how you liberate. Uh, sometimes some people like, uh, there's two practices as you know, we will talk actually, there's two practices which is you giving the, you know, suffering to the body because you want to see that, like, you know, they are believe like the, something called the liberation is like the science of the thumb and it is some somewhere within ourselves with this pattern long body. And Liberation is not easy things. You need to work for it. And you need to work for it. You need to do something for it. So that's why you're giving a torture to the body. You, you're giving lots of pain to come it up. Something like that. That's, that's why there was a, there was a practice as was hanging and standing one leg, you know, the sitting under, you know, the under the sun, you know, so many ways. But there is in the in the other hand, there's some other people who said, no, uh, there is nothing exists when we die. Just enjoy the life. So these are the two extremes actually. We will talk in the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's the good understanding we were uh, regarding uh, in what sense we can say uh, Buddhism is not patchwork. And on the other hand, what are the things that we can see social influence for some of the Buddhist cultural system or traditional system to sustain actually, not the Buddha student, to sustain, to sustain, to sustain some of the things taken from the others. Um, yeah. Um, so, and then let us, um, so I think all of you are very familiar with this. So when we talk about the Buddhism and definitely we always come with these teachings. It's called the Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta. This is the first discourse of the Buddha and all of you know. So since we are studying here, studying here um, uh, the early Buddhist teachings, so we need to enter somewhere. Then I also thought maybe the Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta is good. Because later on, actually, we will take the sutta, not some this kind of sutta, we will take a kind of sutta with the commentary and analyze something related to our life, something related to mental, something related to our mind, something related to sati. For example, I'm planning to talk about the actual sati. What does it mean, sati? Many people are talking about the sati, sati. That means like the mindfulness, mindfulness. What is mindfulness, actually? So these things need to be understood from its original context rather than you know hearing from someone this and that 
okay because uh, hearing is good to or uh, uh, good to go and see ourselves to as a, as a reference but still we need to go ourselves to see those things okay okay then uh, i think uh, some of of course i see then all of you know about dhamma chakra patra so in the same time a uh, few friends are here who need a little bit explanation about the dhamma chakra patra sutta so dhamma chakra patra sutta means the setting in the motion of the wheels of the dhamma this is the first time where buddha was preaching his dhamma but he have realized to the five ascetic okay to the five ascetic after his enlightenment from here he has started his mission to deliver the message uh, what is the suffering why actually we are suffering can we do something about it and how to end the suffering okay and so i'm not going to read in the beginning part beginning part is like a vang me srutang e kansa mayang bhagava something like that that means at once and the buddha after his realization he went to the isipadana arama mikadai is a place okay where buddha was preaching there in okay there in and it's just you know they start from like this so uh tat tatra ko bhagava panchavagye dikku amantesi dwe me bikave antha pabbajitena na sevitabba katame dwe so english translation of course there but let me give you general ideas you know the seeing these words tatra means they are in tatra means they are in at that time at the situation now this is the what the situation this is situation where buddha was addressing five ascetic okay five ascetic okay so there was conversation the long history actually how i mean uh, where at the beginning when the buddha was coming to them they did not show much attention for his but somehow they are mentally the change they are well kind of buddha and they had a greeting they had the you know some kind of greeting how do you do this what was happened okay then they sit down together and the buddha start teaching okay i have found actually what we were trying to find together because those ascetic was actually doing the meditation together with the prince in that right so he moved away he he moved away because he found actually giving torture to the body is not the way to find the realization it's not the way to get the realization he said i need to find the middle way and that middle way actually he will talk here we will talk here in the continuously so okay then he uh, there in at the situation where he was talking to the five city tatra ko means indeed or they are in bhagava the fortunate one the fortunate one means the buddha they are in then the buddha panchavagye bhikkhu amantesi addressed the five bhikkhus the bhikkhus of the five of the uh, group of the five panchavagye so um, actually um, if you really want to understand the pali sutta there is a way of reading pali sutta instead of just reading instead of just reading or uh, because you have to get the meaning or get the idea gradually one after one like tatra ko bhagava amantesi panchavagye bhikkhu he addressed those five ascetics or bhikkhus okay uh so english translation we as you see they are in the fortunate one address the bhikkhus or the five uh, bhikkhus uh, bhikkhus bhikkhu because this is the plural form bhikkhus and panchavagye so according to grammar understanding ye panchavagye uh, of the group of the five so i did not bring actually very so many grammatical ways here 
uh, because uh, when you study the grammar and you know Pali grammar and Pali Sutta, Pali reading, uh, you can't read the Pali Sutta conceptually. Like uh, conceptually, you have to read in a way that uh, fit with the grammar, fit with the language, fit with the ideas, something that. And if I try to give you the, all the analysis here, you will be confused. So our idea is not to make you confused, but clear, <laughs> all right? I don't want to make you clear instead of making you confused. So that's why we did not bring those grammar analysis, but just simply put it here. What we will do here is while we are reading, we will talk more about some specific terms, okay? So Tatrako Bhagava Panchavagye Bhikkhu Amantyasi. At that time, or there is the fortunate one address those five bhikkhus. Bhikkhave, O Mans, Anta Pabba Jitirana Sevitabba. Dwe Me Anta. Me means these. Dwe, two Anta. Dwe Me Anta. Bhikkhave. Dwe me anta mans. These two, these, why these? This is a me, these. Because he was, he was saying at that time, mans, not those or that actually. Sometimes there is a, sometimes there is a translation like mans, there are two extremes. It's how we actually know mostly. Mans, there are two extremes that should not be followed. But where is the idea you can, where is the idea you are saying that there are, there is no meaning in the Pali, actually, that there are in these. Dwe me, monks, these two, these two, what I'm going to say, these two, okay, anta, extremes, anta means extremes. Pabbajitena, by renounced one. So, Somebody say the Pabbajitena. Pabbajitena means renounce one. Okay, this corresponds to the words renounced one. The one who renounced household life to what? To practice certain practice in order to liberate it. Now, do you think ascetic he already know the things here? Yeah? No, actually. Pabbajita, you see, a person who is Pabbajja, or who got this Pabbajja, the Pabbajja, the first people who follow this, they will become monks. But still there is not the monks, or there is not anyone. There are the seeker, true seeker, okay, true seeker. So they don't know actually what's going on, what is right, what is wrong. That's why they are addressing to that. Said, these two extreme Na sevitabba, na means no, sevati, sevitabba seva, means should not be practiced or should not be followed or should not take into considerations. Okay. So simply putting, there are these two extreme should not be followed or practiced by someone who renounced or who looking the looking for the salvation, who looking for the liberation. Katamai katame dwe. What two? What are these two? What are these two? So you know, yes, Katami, actually, I can see the venerable, he will know actually he is also he also can understand why this means but when we katame dwe sometimes most of the time we translate it what are these two <laughs> but can you find the what are meaning these two means no katame dwe what two katame means what dwe two what two that's why we have to understand that's why that is when you translate, when you read the sutta, there's a different way of understanding the suttas. You can understand the teachings, early Buddhist teaching through the concept, through the translate, through the paraphrasing, through the simple you know, understanding. So the importance of reading early Buddhist discourses is 
to read the thing as it is, as it is first. Then to, to your more understanding with others' help, you can get the bigger pictures. Okay. Now here, the two, three terms. And that term says, so he addressing the Buddha, the Buddha, I uh, mean, if I go to the simple, you know, the general understand, general uh, idea is like this. The Buddha, okay, they are in, addressed these five months, okay, uh, five months. Then he said, these two extremes should not be followed, announced to one. What these two? What are these two? Then we will see. And now you know what is the Pabba Jite or renounced one means. So the one who is seeking the truth. So do you think um, when a person uh, renounced holes, by that moment he know the truth? He may have some kind of faith, faith what he need, but still he know the truth. He need to be guided by someone actually. Okay, that's why uh, teachings are coming in this way. Okay. No, I prayed. I'm not going to tell you the read. <laughs> uh, your chaya, what now you have seen that uh, what these two, there is a two now. We are going to talk about the two extremes, okay? In this, in this slide is talking about it. <clears throat> Yo cha ayang, yo cha ayang, kame su, kame sukali kan yogo. He no kamo oto janiko anario anatta sanghito. Okay. That which is now, that which is means. That which is means tuanta. Uh, of tuanta, one is this clinging to sensual pleasure in sensual desire. Kamesu, kama sukalli kan yogo. Yogo means here, you see, yogo, these are the like practices, a kind of practices that you practice where you fulfill or you clean or you try to fulfill your desire in this sensual world, sensual desire, with the sensual desire. So, hino gammo potojaniko, these are the Pali words, these are the words, uh, you know, the uh, modifying this, the quality. So, that which is this clinging to the sensual pleasure in the sensual desire, which is low, hurdle, ordinary, ignoble, unbeneficial. Here see clinging to the clinging to the sensual pleasure with the wrong ideas, that is uh, that is what the make us suffer. Okay, so this is the one. So out of two. Uh, out of two, out of two means now Buddha they are saying no by a true seeker he should not follow two kind of extreme. One extreme is what one extreme is clinging to the sensual desire should not be followed. The nature of such kind of sensual desire is he no gammo poto janiko anario anatta sanghito. Those are the law, the law, uh, curdle. Ordinary, ignoble, it's not beneficial. Okay. And that is another one is another one is clinging to the self-torture. Yo chayang atta kilamatani yogo. The another one is giving torture to the body. Do you remember last time we talked about this? These two practices were there during the Buddha's time, actually. He knew about it very clearly. Then he realized these are the wrong way to be liberated, to, to liberate. In order to liberate, in order to free from this all suffering, these two practices you must give up because the nature of these two practices are 
what is not the way to attain you know the liberations and now you see here the the, the, the how the qualification of the uh, the, the quality of the this particular matan yoga means giving or clinging to the self torture that means giving to the pain to the body as we saw it. so like i need to do the meditation five hours six hours ten hours one day whole day otherwise how can this is also wrong ideas like you don't have to attach you don't have to cling to that idea doing meditation for long hours and other things but wanting to do the long hour meditation with a kind of a kind of uh, how to say um, a kind of uh, torturing way is another things is another things okay and that is dukkha that is that is very painful that is ignoble that is unbeneficial so that's what the buddha tried right for love, six years that's what the Buddha tried six years. You know, as you see the pictures behind me, that is was heaven, right? You can see the pictures. That was, this, is the, the, this is the time period where Buddha was doing the meditation for the six year. Then, you know, he, he, you know, he became very thin and still then he did not eat, he did doing the long hour meditation, but finally realized uh, this is not the way. This is not the way. Ete te bikku. Ete te bikku ubo ante anubagamma majjima patipada tatagatena abhisambuddha chakku karani jnana karani upasamaya abhinyaya sambodaya nibbhane sangvatati. So this is the Pali how. So let me read it once again then we will talk go to the translation and we will talk there more. Just. Yo chayang kame su kama sukalika no yogo hino gammo oto janiko anario anatta sanghito yo chayang atta kila mata no yogo duko anario anatta sanghito Ete te bikave ubo ante anupa gamma majima patipada tata gatena abisam buddha chakku karani yana karani upasamaya abinyaya sambodaya nibhanaya sangvatati. Those who understand it will be probably about they are really understood already. You know, it's conceptual, it's very nice. Uh, you know, the sometimes personally when I read the you know, I read the English class, it makes me confused. When I read the Pali, it's make it very clear. <laughs> so that's the nature, actually. That's why we need to learn some kind of you know the actual language. Okay. So now you already know what are the two extremes that Buddha said not to practice. One is clinging to the self uh, sensual pleasure okay another one is uh, clinging to the self torturing that means giving too much uh, pleasure to our body our life and giving too much pain to our life both ways are not the ways both ways are not the ways and he realized the middle path with, with you know the Without falling, you see, without ubo ubo means both ante ubo ante anupagam anu upagamma means falling or arriving. Okay, anu upagamma means having not falling to these two extremes. Ubo means both ante means extremes. Anupagamma means not falling. That means without holding to this. Like holding means you hold that idea. What idea? If I give, if I want to liberate, I need to give the enjoy to our, my body. Or I need to enjoy, uh, I need to give the pain to the, my body. These are the holding to the ideas. These are the ideas that you are holding 
and you thinking and you working on it. Okay. So this holding. So hold without holding to these both extremes. Okay. Tathagata. Tathagata means, okay, what is the Tathagata means here actually? Tathagata. Uh, you know, with these terms, people are doing the a long, big, big research. Tata agata, some people say, tata agata, some people say, tata, tata gata. There's two ways. There are some who said, um, tata means what actually? There's also one thing. Tata means what? Tata means uh, its own natures. Its own nature means, now we, 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 we can actually divide here like, Tata agata. Tata, oh, where's words? Where's the words? Words away. Tata agata, you know, yeah, tata agata. Okay, tata agata is the, the, according to the grammatical uh, grammatical analysis, become like, you know, by uh, the by Buddha, something like that. But tata agata means, tata, tata means its own nature, the nature. So what the natures, the true nature of the things. So what is the true nature of the things? What are the true nature of the phenomena? Okay, what are the true nature of the phenomena of suffering? It's painful, right? It's pain, oh, sorry. It's painful. It's give us suffering. So these, so these are the these are the nature of the suffering. It's painful, it's, it's it's horrible. It's very difficult to hold. Uh, you know the pay, um, You know the uh, difficult to uh, live with it. That so true nature is true nature of the phenomena uh, regarding the pain is like there is a pain. There must be the cause and condition behind the pain, as we said in the earlier. Buddha does not accept things happen without anything. Okay, things, I mean, again, it depends on the nations. Things happen with something as a cause and conditions. Actually, we also will talk about it a little bit later. So, uh, so what the Buddha did, where the Buddha arrived is actually where he can see the thing as it is, instead of as it appeared to ours. So what does mean it here? The nature of mundane people, the nature of, you know, the nature of uh, these sensual things. He realized the things, those as it is. So that means arrive to the truth, realize the truth, the true nature of the phenomena. So that's why sometimes, uh, sometimes they said that he realized or he approached uh, to the there where the reality is there or sometimes it says also like he arrived to the reality okay this is the different things uh, but anyhow understand that uh, tathagata one meaning is a uh, in that way okay Tata, abhisambuddha, uh, abhisambuddha tathagata has awakened to the middle path abhisambuddha abhisambuddha may awaken to the middle path which Give the rise of rise to the vision. Actually, chakku karani, chakku karani. Vision gives to the knowledge, jnana karani, which leads, leads to the peace. Upasamai, abhinya, jnana, jnana is jnana. Abhinya is the higher knowledge, right? Lean the higher knowledge. And sambodaya, bodha means, bodha means to become uh, enlightened. And Nibbhanaya Sangvatati. Nibbhanaya Sangvatati is coming, if it is corresponding to the uh, those dvemi. So, up to now, try to understand. Uh, let me summarize what I say. O oh, monks, O oh, monks, these two are the extreme. Okay, these two extreme. One is giving or clinging to the uh, sensual desire, or give one of the second one is giving to the pain to the body, or the self torturing, 
both are the attachment because you you attach to it attach to it uh, then these are the not the benefits these are the not the noble these are not the way to liberate that's why a true seeker without holding these two views they are follow the way that the buddha has uh, you know the discovered through his enlightenment that is called the Majjhima Patipada, which lead you to, uh, which leads or which give the rise of visions, knowledge, will lead you to the peace and lead you to the higher knowledge, to achieve the higher knowledge, to the enlightenment and to the Nibbana. Okay. Now, let me tell you one thing. During the Buddha's time, there was... Uh, there was uh, two uh, person who was practicing Sunaka Vrata and Go Vrata. Sunaka means uh, uh, dog. Vrata means a kind of attachment to certain kind, certain kind of uh, precept practices. Okay, so Sunaka Vrata means means here a kind of practice which is like. The, all the behavior of a dog. Okay. And there was another person who was practice, practicing his whole life in order to attain liberation, like as a cow. It's called the Govrata. So there was two person who was practicing Sunakavrata and Govrata. These two person arrived to the Buddha once one one time. Then now there are no Buddha can tell the people's uh, future. Buddha can tell where they are was, uh, they are, where they are born, where they came from, because that ability to see the Buddha, you know, the past lives, and Buddha had the ability to read others' mind. So considering all these things, they went to the Buddha, they was asking from the Buddha. So uh, this is my friend who is using, uh, who is practicing Go uh, Sunaka Vrata for a long, long time. Uh, so please, could you tell me like what will happen? I mean, I mean, by this time there was there was a kind of sure that okay, my friends, they are, they are was practicing this kind of a long, long times. So they want to make sure that they are already got what they want, the liberation. So they was asking. So could you uh, see like uh, after that what will happen? I mean. Um, like a kind of idea, I'm going to be liberated, right? Something like that. So Buddha was actually and uh, kept silence. Uh, Buddha kept silence and he was doing ask this question first time, second time, and third time again is starting. Then he said, well, since your consciousness is working, since you really so attached to the such kind of practices, since you like such kind of behavior, such kind of yelling, eating, behaving, walking, so after like you, you will be that you will be that you will be the you'll born as a cow as a dog not the liberation for long so this was a vrata this was the attachment this was the attachment to such kind of practices that's why uh, buddha said not to practice not to attach not to cling with such kind of practices vrata attached to any kind of so Majjima Pratipada. So what is the middle path? We'll talk. We'll talk. Here just uh, up to now, the Buddha only just saying that, okay, uh, somebody should not be practiced this and that because there are this blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I wake up or I become the Buddha following the middle path, which is like this, like this, like this. Now, what are the middle path? He did not tell yet. Okay. Maybe here he will talk here. So why oh because then which is that middle way awakened to by the Tathagata, which gives rise to visions, knowledge, peace, higher knowledge, to enlightenment and nibbana. Now the question is, okay, I, I don't want to teach you the grammatical things here because um um uh, there's a way to read the suttas uh, and understand the suttas word by words and get the meanings uh but uh, 
let me take this is in a general way so now you know already that buddha was talking about like the about the middle way okay so and he said if you follow the middle way there is a vision knowledge peace higher knowledge and it will lead you to enlightenment that is the nibbana so what is that middle path what is that middle path so what is the middle path do you think What is the middle path in Buddhism? Majjhima Patipada. Yes, Bhante. Majjhima Patipada. What is that Majjhima Patipada? That is the question. We all know about our translation and Pali words and maybe. What is that Majjhima Patipada actually? Adagilamata. Yeah, sorry. Adagilamata and Kama Kama Sukhandika no yoga. Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, what is the middle path? I mean, once we have to avoid Atakilamata and yoga and Kama Sukhandika no yoga, that means having or not holding to the, uh, you know, the clinging to the sensual pleasure or clinging to the self-torturing, we have to follow the path which is called the Majjima Patipada. Now the question is, what is that Majjima Patipada that Buddha introduced? Are you, Pante, you just say, no? Kame yes. One? yes. It's meant uh, too much, it's a uh uh sensual pleasure we sh shouldn't uh too much sensual pleasure we shouldn't uh attach on and then extreme also we shouldn't attach on just go middle one it means not uh, too much uh how do i say pleasure not uh, torture okay yeah this one no you already mentioned too in before that kamisu and then it's uh, article and matana you go the call. Yeah, that is the two extremes. So one should not be followed, right? That are the two extremes mm -hmm. that one should not follow. So what are the middle path then? What are the okay? Now we know uh, the middle path. Okay, if you follow the middle path, it will lead you. Okay, it will lead you for the what for the vision, knowledge, peace higher knowledge and will lead you to enlighten right if we mm -hmm. if, okay i mean it's like we share knowledge at a nibbana these are the result of practicing or following the middle path right now what are the middle path you mean some embraces some example that way you mean now you see already here Middle path is the middle path, the noble eightfold path. Noble eightfold path. Uh, now you have to understand like this. Hmm. Without holding to the two extreme, okay, as you understood already, without holding the two extremes, once a uh, Buddha was following the Majjhima Patipada. Okay, Majjima Patipada, that means middle path. By following that middle path, he, there was vision in him, knowledge, peace, higher knowledge, enlightenment, and Nibbana is there. Now, if you look this slide, actually the answer is here. In this slide, it says, what are the ways or what are the Majjima oh, yeah. Patipada? Yeah, if you ask that one, you we, we can say no. If you say that, yeah. uh, what is the way you? If you say, and then we can say that noble eight, uh, eightful path, no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, yeah. so it's okay. Sometimes because uh, what was happening is actually sometimes um, yes, we know the middle way. What is the middle way then? We have to name it and we have to know it. <clears throat> with the words and we have to know it with some kind of experience. 
for example um, now if i say that what is uh, sankara uh, uh, how many times there is hundreds time we have heard this sankara the term sankara sankara suffering suffering actually what is suffering okay if we uh, for example some of our like friends are here so if we asking you say the suffering what is suffering actually so they will bring us some of the daily sufferings are there actually there is not really suffering <laughs> so there is suffering so that's why actually these kind of things we need to the exactly with the words so yes the middle part uh, the middle way is as we see he says Katama chasa bikave mang katama katama chasa sami that. What is that? Majjima patipada. Middle path, okay, middle path that that arisen uh, to by the Buddha uh, in uh, which lead him to have the vision, knowledge, peace and higher knowledge and enlightenment. Then he said, Ayang evaryo maggo. Are you seeing? Ayang eva aryo attangiko maggo. Indeed, it is this noble eightfold path that gave praise the vision in Buddha, higher knowledge in Buddha, peace in Buddha. That means if somebody wants to overcome the suffering, the way he needs to follow is Arya Attangika Magga. So no one from today, no one, no mistake that if somebody asking you what is the middle path in the Buddhism without any doubt, say Arya Attangika Magga. I no need to think twice. There is no other way. There is no other way. This is the one and only way. Arya Attangika Magga. So, of course, we have to understand like uh, what is the middle te teaching? Somebody, maybe some, some, somebody sometimes say they may four noble truth. Four noble truth, what? And where is the, where is this Arya Tangi can fit? Actually, this Arya Tangi Magga coming in the path of leading, uh, path, the path of cessation of suffering, right? So, this is the one and only way. This is the, this is the, this is the way of ending. This is the noble way, noble eightfold path. So what are they? Samma Ditti, Samma Sankapo, Samma Vacha, Samma Kamanto, Samma Ajivo, Samma Vayamo, Samma Sati, Samma Samad. So it says there it is or indeed it is this noble eightfold path. Sayyatapa. Sayyatapa means like, as follows, as name, as 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 follows, as like this, something like Sayyatapi. Right view, right thoughts, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. This is the way that will give the rise of rise of vision. What is the vision means? Okay. And this thing is what is the chakku is here actually? <laughs> Dhamma chakka. Have you I mean if you study the Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, this sutta at the end, there is something called the Dhamma Chakku Udapadi. Uh Dhamma Chakku. What what is the chakku means? So that is not like another eye here. <laughs> knowledge, yeah. Knowledge. Yeah, it's about the, the knowledge to see the thing as it is, instead of yes. as it appears. Now we see the things, okay, this is uh, this, that, that's all ordinary world. But once there are... Hello, can you hear me, I feel? Yeah, I can hear. Okay, yes. so... Once, once, uh, once he is followed this path and realized, then the vision arise in him is 
the trueness of the things. Trueness of the things. So, trueness of the feeling. Now, he will not go after the feelings. Like, oh, this is a good feeling. I need this more, this, and that's not like this. It's bad. I, I don't like this, not like this. They observe it. They're looking it. So, these are the visions. Okay. Then, the next thing is Samaditi. Uh, yeah. Bikkave. Ayanko sa bikkave. Bikkave, monks. This is that middle way. Ayanko sa bikkave. That means you have to read in this way actually. Bikkave. Ayanko sa majjima patipada tatagatena abhisambuddha chakku karani jnana karani upasamaya Abhinyaya Sambodaya Nibhana Sangvata. Bikave Mangs. This is that noble. That means which one? That means this. Which this? At this. This. Oi, 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 oi. Mm, how to how to highlight? I cannot highlight. Anyhow. So sorry. So that means that noble, that middle way means actually this. This means the, this. That means a noble path. It is this or it is that. Now you see why that here? This is the way when we do the translation, especially the monks who have studied, we have to... Now here it was using this and why here that? Because they already revealed what is the path. Already they review the path. So when we translate into the English, uh, we really have to understand the conceptual, understand uh, conceptual, and uh, you know the the content also. Okay, so it is indeed that middle way. Okay, awakened. Awakened means here. Now, some, he is not the awakened one. If you say the awakened one, then there's the Buddha. But he awakened means the verbs. Like awakened. This is the way that awakened by which oh, awakened to the uh, to the Tathagata. Why to the Tathagata? Because actually here following the uh, following the grammatical rules. Grammatical rules. That means actually in the simple sense it is by following this way that the no visions, knowledge, peace, higher knowledge arose in the Buddha and lead him to enlightenment and Nibbana. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very clear. Okay. And after this, uh, then there is actually, actually again, okay, this is the just, uh, you know, this is just uh, like Buddha gave at the beginning, like a kind of abstract. Then actually how to do, how the things happen is talking. Idanko pana bhikkave dukkha nariya satcha. You see the, even the Four Noble Truth is coming there. Actually, the uh, like four noble truth talking about the, like the suffering, the cause of suffering, the cessation of suffering, right? Then the path is coming. So path is already revealed like that. Uh, okay, this is the path. If you follow, if someone follow this path, this and this will happen. So then he will bring again to the beginning level. Okay, there is suffering, something like this. So idam ko pana vikkave dukkan samudayan. Jati Pidukka, Jara Pidukka, Vyadi Pidukka, Maranam Pidukka, uh, Appiehi Sampayogo Dukko, Piehi Vipayogo Dukko, uh, Yampi Channa, Labati Tampi Dukka, Sanki Tena, Panchupada, Nakkanda Dukka. So I'm not going to talk about this today, um, but I will let you read and uh, that you read. So, um, before wind up, let me read. Uh, finish reading that uh, the part that I showed you. Okay. Oh, because now this is the noble truth. Okay. 
this is the noble truth about the origin of suffering. But two is suffering. Why the two is actually cha p? You know, uh, those who know the Pali, they will know the p means two also, right? Now, right? also two. So you see, ja tipi ja tipi dukkha. But two is suffering. Jara p old age to suffering. Of course, if you always put two, 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 then you will be disturbing. That's why today's birth, old days, disease, and finally a suffering, a two suffering, something right in that. But as I said again, this translation done accurate to following the exact words. So that's why some disturbances might occur as you are the English readers, but try to go through it. And it will be good, so good for the those who can understand the Pali and English both. Okay. Again, let me read from the beginning again. Or because now this is the noble truth about the origin of suffering, birth, old age, disease, and death, or suffering, and sorrow, lamentation, unhappiness, misery is also suffering. Union with the unpleasant is suffering. Union with the beloved. Uh, uh, yes, union with the unbelie uh, unbeloved one or suffering, not getting what one wishing, that is suffering in brief, the five grasping aggregate of suffering. So most of the people actually pancha pancha kanda dukkha. No, it's not pancha kanda dukkha, it's pancha upadana kandukkha. If the five aggregate is a problem, nobody can survive actually. Five aggregates are not the, not the problems, problems, but the problem is. Uh, our attachment to the external world through these, you know, the, through these organs. That's a problem. That's why clinging or grasped, clinging to the things that enter to our world through the five faculty is the suffering. Okay. So that is what the basic means. So um, let me summarize uh, the whole things, what I'm saying, because I feel like I said a lot, but I really don't want it. I want you to engage a little bit more. At the beginning, we said uh, during the Buddha's time, there were, there, were, uh, there were so many different, different views, practices were there. So Prince Siddhartha, he tried many ways and learned from them, tried those ways but realize that is not the way to overcome the suffering. Then after long time meditation, he discovered to follow the middle way and he found the middle way and uh, he practiced, followed the middle way and he attained, realized and he revealed his this path uh, to the five ascetics, five ascetics uh, who are named after later on five bhikkhus, okay, five monks. And uh, this discourses or this first teaching is known as the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. In this sutta, it's talking mostly about the what is suffering, why suffering, the way of out, the way out of suffering. So what here today what we discuss is that the Majjhima Patipada, the origin of the Majjhima Patipada, Patipada, and what are the Majjhima Patipada? The origin of Majjhima Patipada took place. Uh, took place, uh, which is uh, separate from those, uh, you know, the practices or the extremes and separate from those extremes. And the one who ever wished to seek the happiness, that is the total liberation from the samsara, so he need to follow the uh, middle path. Uh, the middle path, that means the middle, uh, yes, the Buddha, according to Buddhist understanding, is for the middle path. And middle part is actually nothing but the eight noble path. And eight noble path, as we say, Samma, Diti, Samma, Sankapa, Samma, Vacha. Then later on, he in this discourses continue talking about what is suffering, why suffering, the way out of suffering. So when way out of suffering, there again, the Buddha will talk about this eight noble, sorry, uh, this eight, four, uh, eight path. In you know the in this in, in 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 details, okay. So that is what we discussed, and one also thing we discussed actually that is like the can we say the Buddhism as a patchworks, 
uh, combine something something to like things little bit talking from the Ajivakas, little bit talking from the Shamanas, Brahmanism, um, uh, is it something like that? Uh, then we came to know that, uh, no, actually it's not like that. Uh, in order to survive, survive some of the Buddha's teachings, in order to, as, a, as, a, as a good leaders, he listened to society. So to make a kind of harmony, peace, uh, certain things he's taken, you know, you know, in the day-to-day -day life, but not in the Dhamma. So Dhamma is, as uh, Kenny pointed out, it's his own understanding, own realization. That is uh, through his long time practices. Long time practices means uh, uh, parami, the accomplishment of the parami. The reason why he is here. So that is how the things happen. So I don't want to continue uh, taking from my side. Now I would like to open this uh, for you. So if you have any questions, uh, we can discuss about it. And those who want to leave, because I can understand it's quite late there. So if you want to leave, um, yeah, you can leave. And so no kindly uh, know that uh, we will uh, we send all the information to the groups that you have seen. Yeah, we will do it there. And thank you very much for that. Thank you, Venerable.